Huh. So that's what I'd look like if I wore three masks. That does, that does not seem worth the effort. Hello all of you little demons, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another episode of the awesomely named and awfully hosted Choose Your Own Adventure, the weekly medieval format where I, the crown jewels of WhatCulture.com, take a list chosen by you, yes you the person who has a parcel to open today. I got sent this by a friend who has a clothing company and if it's what I think it is, yes brother, it's my friend makes a clothing company called Pantheon. And what they do is they take loads of like gods from a, hence the name Pantheon, and put them onto t-shirts. Hence a Hydra over here as well. Does a range of like Norse ones as well. Does Japanese one, Buddhism stuff. It's absolutely brilliant. Check him out. And anyway, I'm just gonna put this on. Ah, yes, you get to decide what list I dole out to you each and every week. And this week we have none other to thank than ba 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 Cody Lotz. That's Cody Lotz for their suggestion of video game achievements or trophies that were made impossible because they were just down to random chance. And this is the thing, in the video game industry, is there anything more satisfying than that sweet chime that rings out when you pop a trophy or achievement for besting a particularly bastardy boss or some finicky platforming level? No, of course not. But this is ruined, I say, ruined by the gods of RNG. If I was clever enough, I would have worked that into the Pantheon joke. But I didn't. Yes, the true leader of the pantheon of gaming gods is the god of RNG, who can basically come along, take a look at what you're doing, all of your hard work, and just say, ha ha ha, roll a dice, I hate you. So let's take a look at them today, when we were bested by this bastard. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight video game achievements made impossible by RNG. And you know the drill by now, say hi to me here in the live chat and put your suggestions for next week's episode down in the comment section below. But with that in mind, let's get on with this list. Number eight, collect 20 legendary vault dwellers, Fallout Shelter. So, let me ask you something. Do you like paying for your achievements? Of course you don't, because that sort of mentality is utterly insane and you're a normal person. And yet, games like Fallout Shelter bloody exist, which basically pay all entire achievements thanks to their pure breed horror of RNG and microtransactions. <laughs> Ooh, that, that, that made me sh that shook me to my entire core. My core is shook. Now, to give this game some credit, acquiring 20 different legendary vault dwellers which drop from the game's loot box, I mean lunchbox reward system, can theoretically be done without spending a penny. It's just going to take you one hell of a long time to do this, seeing as legendary vault dwellers have a 3.8% chance of dropping, and only one card in each pack you unlock possesses the chance to even roll that low percentage check. Therefore, trying to 100% this title comes down to a horrible mixture of RNG and, as Bethesda would love you to know, microtransactions. Ooh, you can just taste the corporate oil. Open my mouth, glug it in. <laughs> Greasy. Long story short, hard pass. Number seven, luck be a lady, Mortal Kombat 9. So if there's anything that hammers home the point that leaving things up to random chance in a video game absolutely sucks, it is any gameplay experience that revolves around a kind of slot machine mechanic. Because this boils my piss. In a literal case of just pressing a button and crossing your fingers, achievements like hitting the jackpot in Bioshock, jackpot in Borderlands 2, and luck be a lady from Mortal Kombat 9 waste your money and your time as you sink in cash again and again. Hell, luck be a lady is even worse than the others here because you can only take part in this slot machine madness in the test your luck sections, and the game can be rigged from the start so that the dragon symbols that you need to match might not even spawn on the reels themselves themselves, rendering this literally impossible. Cool. I mean, Jesus Christ, I'd have even taken the slot machine shenanigans from Space Quest over this bullshit. And lest we not forget, that was a slot machine that if you were incredibly lucky, a laser would come out and kill you ending your game. I'd rather take that. Number six, Messiah, Outlast 2. 
So, if you're going to ever try to undertake the Messiah achievement run in Outlast 2, then you might start thinking, after getting ground into dust again and again and again by different enemies, or just one shot killed by bosses that came out of absolutely nowhere, why it's even called the Messiah achievement, because it probably would be more apt to call it the Pariah achievement, because you will f feel like one come the close of this. Everything wants you dead, even bloody inanimate objects get in on the action, and thanks to the requirements being to complete the game on the hardest setting in one run with no checkpoints and not using the night vision on your camera, this is one of the most brutal runs going in gaming. You have to question your faith when it comes to this point, like come down here man, I just need a quick word to keep it Now this is the thing, I know you've done a lot of good, pray slime Jesus, I know you've done a lot of good in this world, um, but this, you should have definitely stepped in and just pounded this guy on the head, should have hit him down, because this should not be allowed to exist. This is just brutally unfair. He's going. He's going. He's not even listening. He's not. Have I? He's. My, my saviour's cast me aside. Like a, like a crisp packet. I'm floating in the breeze. Prawn cocktail. Maybe a salt and vinegar one. Nah, I've pickled onion. I'm a pickled onion. What am I talking about? <laughs> Things get especially spicy when you realise that some of the enemy placement and boss patterns are down to random chance, meaning that you might well waste two hours going back to where you died before, only for enemies to react completely differently. With many other ultra nightmare modes in gaming, offering you set patterns of enemy and just requiring you to put down the blood, sweat and tears, that feels fair. This, however, Totally not. You could be taken out by an unseen stalker or just round a corner and walk into a one hit kill boss. Good times. Number five, sinking ships. Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. Mm, now, if I'm being truly honest, uh, this battleships inspired mini game from the outstandingly brilliant The Wind Waker doesn't really qualify for this list because it doesn't actually give you an achievement for completing it. But I am going to fudge the rules a little because, well, of two reasons. The first one is that if you actually manage to complete this mini game in under 20 shots, you get a treasure, and therefore I do think that that counts as a reward enough to justify its place in this list. And secondly, I have lost so much time to this and had so many speedruns ruined for people that I've watched playing this game that I feel like we need a group therapy session. This aqua-based board game will turn even oceans to steam with rage of untold amounts of gamers, as thanks to the placement of the octos that you need to shell back to hell, you can end up with placements that defy all bloody logic. Sinking ships has sunk the hopes and dreams of many would-be speedrunners looking to claim the hidden treasure chest, required for 100% completion runs, and has been responsible for the utter obliteration of world record runs time and time again. And the sound of the guy who runs this game going sploosh Sploosh. Sploosh over and over replaces the f***ing whale in my nightmares. It's become like this waking dream. I'll walk around just going like, Sploosh? Sploosh? James? Sploosh? That reminds me actually, it's time for uh, the musical interlude. You and Jazz ready? Yeah. Yes. F fantastic. Where, where was Jazz last week, by the way? Who? Cool. Right, so let's do this week's musical interlude because it's time to get splooshy. When I walk down the street, all the ladies go sploosh, sploosh. Nope, go on to number four. Absolutely not. Number four, Saint, Dead Rising. To state my intent loudly and clearly, I absolutely adore the Dead Rising franchise, and as a super duper diehard fan of this series, I can say hand on heart that it has been a bit of a tumultuous ride for the games. Dead Rising 4? More like Dead Rising f off. Yes, indeed, when it comes to things like pacing, boss battles, and especially achievements, things can range wildly from being incredibly fun to utter tests of your sanity. And take, for example, the Saint achievement from the original Dead Rising, which will require you to have the patience of one in order to get around the absolutely abysmal AI. Now, to pop this chief, you'll need to rescue at least 50 survivors, in a game of which there are only 53 possible ones. This means that entire playthroughs have to be orchestrated around guiding groups of survivors from point to point before dropping them off like a desperate parent at a childcare playpen. And making this almost impossible, however, is a hefty sprinkle of RNG. You could load up a section of the map and be completely swarmed with zombies straight away, or just have your brain-dead AI decide that they'll just be like, zombies. 
I fancy a hug. Just just stay with the group, mate. I, I'm, I'm giving you a shotgun. Why are you not using it? You just walk up there. You're like, time to lock and load. <laughs> what comes next? Fire. Fire, you idiot. Fire. Fire. Where? Where? Boosh, boosh. Take out bits of the ceiling. And my <laughs> insanity. <sighs> this coupled with the game's arduous check system. There isn't one. And this can see you reset your game over and over until you get the optimal run. Number three, about the author, Bastion. About the author is Bastion's biggest challenge. It sees the player go up against wave after wave of ever increasingly difficult enemies. And this time, for good measure, instead of the usual 10 or 20 that you found previously in the game, this ramps it up to 30 waves. Woof. And in order to unlock this achievement, you need to do this with all 10 of the in-game shrines active. Now these shrines, for the uninitiated, add different negative effects on the player and also buff the enemies to almost ridiculous levels. So as you can imagine, having all 10 of these on at once is kind of like being an ice cube in hell, in that you're going to make an embarrassing little puddle and then get absolutely steamed as you have your soul dragged over coals. Yet there's actually something hidden to the player that's going to make this experience even worse, and that is the aforementioned 11th god of gaming, RNG, which is also added into the mix. Now, RNG in this game is a cruel, cruel bastard, and you will know his power when he just tells enemies to suddenly just stop taking damage, or even worse, reflecting attacks. Cheers! Not being able to predict when this is going to happen is like walking a tightrope at all times, and since these reflections count as coming from the enemy, these attacks that you launched are coming back to you buffed. Brilliant. Number two, unachievable, the Stanley Parable. The Stanley Parable is just a wonderful slice of gaming insanity, isn't it? From rewarding players equally when it comes to following the rules and also for absolutely breaking them, this game is like a giant flowchart that kind of reminds me of that scene from Always Sunny with Pepe Sylvia. Carol, Carol! <laughs> Charlie Day, what a legend, man. <laughs> it's also a title packed with achievements that border on straight up trolling. From Go Outside, which could only be unlocked by not playing the game for five years, to simply turning achievements on and off in the settings menu all the way through to the most infuriating and utterly random trophy entitled Unachievable. This one achievement caused the entire fan base to shrivel like a slug to salt as they tried again and again and again to figure out how to actually unlock the bastard. And of of course, this game gives you utterly no clues whatsoever as to how to go about ticking this off. So it turns out that when the title loads up, it performs a series of random checks, and that then determines what you need to do in order to unlock Unachievable. And it can be literally anything. It could be standing still, doing nothing for 15 minutes at a time. It could be typing a random word on a terminal. It could be reaching a certain ending within a certain amount of time, or just pressing a button on a wall for 500 times. There are so many things it could be that it's actually maddening. It's completely randomized and as such could theoretically never unlock for you. How utterly charming. Still, if you are desperate for this chief, you can edit the game's files using Notepad to pop it, yet for those looking to unlock this legitimately, there is no clue as to when or where that might finally happen. Good luck, my friend. You are literally going to need it. And number one, Chow Down. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the video game. Truly, it is a wonderful time to be alive, my friends, because yes, you can now once more purchase Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, the video game from online storefronts across the globe. Remember, this there was a time when Ubisoft, for some reason, I think due to contractual difficulties, pulled the game. You couldn't even get it anywhere, but now we get to experience this face-punching, pixelated purity. It's just like, oh, yeah, just... Yes, I like this game a lot. However, while it is an absolute blast to play this game, alone or with a team of friends, there is one achievement that may well put you off 100%ing this tip-top title. You see, Chow Down is unlocked by having the player call in all four of the support strikers while in-game. Strikers being the name given to assist moves that you can call in when your guts meter is full enough. Of the four, the player begins with only one, Knives Chow, and only by completing the game and unlocking Nega Scott will they be able to call in Nega Knives. For the second striker to be ticked off. So far, so simple, right? Well, buckle up, my friend, because things are about to get rockier than Sly Stallone being added to Mount Rushmore. 
The other two strikers, Mr. and Mrs. Chow, can only be unlocked by defeating Mr. Chow in a secret boss battle. You can find him by entering a level that has a black figure icon hovering above it, but the battle is incredibly tough and you'll need to be on top form if you're to emerge victorious. Thankfully though, you'll now have the ability to call in Mr. and Mrs. Chow, however, when they actually show up is completely randomised, with Mrs. Chow being the rarest of all appearances, meaning that you could play for literally hours and not see her drop into the game. But here's the thing, I know what you'll be saying to yourself, Jules, you magnanimous snowy egg of a man, I am prepared to put in the hours to this game because it's absolutely brilliant and you know what, I love the enthusiasm, but I've got some bad news for you, because you see, this achievement is glitched. Yes, that's right, you could have them all appear in your game and it won't pop. And the only way to get around this is to start the whole bloody thing all over again, literally a new save. Oh, oh. Oh! Ah! And there we go, my friends. Those were eight video game achievements made impossible by RNG. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. And put your suggestions for next week's episode down there as well. I love reading each and every one of them, you cheeky little whippets. I see you. I see you out there. By the way, I know that there is one that uh, people keep requesting, which is like what video game bosses I could defeat if I was sucked into a video game. Start start a petition to my boss. I've pitched it to him every single week that this has been up there. No, he says. No, hammer at the gates. Come on, let's storm the castle. Anyway, right, completely beside the point there. I'll be back next week with a new suggestion, thanks to you lovely people out there. But if you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or, and I've got a special little request for you today, go to RetroJ with a zero underscore Instagram where I'm doing all of my Warhammer painting, because a lot of people ask me about what I'm working on, some Grey Knights at the moment, just in case. So you can go see my progress over there. I don't update it very often, but I am getting better at using social media. I'm an old man. I, I find it very scary out there. But still, yeah, go follow me over there if you feel the volition. But before I go, I just want to say one thing, and that is to you, you beautiful person watching this video. I have got an achievement that you can unlock that is not up to random chance. It is not up to any ridiculous difficulty settings. It is just to be kind to yourself because you bloody well deserve the best things in life. Don't beat yourself up for mistakes that you've made in the past. Everyone makes them. Go forward with love in your heart and a positive mental attitude because you are an absolute ledge. And you deserve all the best things in life. All right? That's all I want for you. It's a healthy and happier life for you. Now go out there and absolutely smash it, you big ledge. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. I'll speak to you soon. Peace.